go, ladies and gentlemen. This is it. A Garden State Esports first. For the first time, we are going to have a face to face match. You see them seeing themselves for the first time on camera. The Verona Hillbillies have traveled to the West Essex Knights to take on their rivals face to face. Soak it in, ladies and gentlemen. It's a New Jersey first. We got the live crowd ready for the action. Now, I'll tell you, here is part of the fun, ladies and gentlemen, as I try to get my stream going. And I'm going to apologize in advance. Uh, still learning, still teaching about this whole streaming thing. But um, I am actually in my classroom in Monmouth Beach. Like I said, the Verona Hillbillies have traveled uh, to take on the West Essex Knights in a Garden State Esports first. So it kind of shows you uh, just a little bit about the world that we live in, right? I'm able to cast, you know, remotely for a match that's finally being played in person. Uh, super excited for the whole thing. And so what we're gonna start off with in just a few minutes is talking about lineups. We're gonna go live to West Essex to see the handshake. Um, but again, I am excited to have you. If you are not familiar with Garden State Esports, um, we are a nonprofit, Scholastic Esports League, totally run by educators with the purpose of using esports as a way to help kids grow socially, emotionally, and academically. Uh, so really excited to be here, really excited to bring you uh, the action today. Again, I apologize, I got Discord messages going, I got social media going, I got the chat going. Uh, you know, I'm kind of a, a, kind of a one-man army right now because I did not want to miss this historic event. Well, let's take a look at the lineup. Right, today's starting lineups in Overwatch are going to be for the one and six West Essex Knights. We have Phil, Drew Man Group, 8-Bit Frog, Anonymous, Holy Lemons, and Bahath. Giant Dwarf, I can see I misspelled that, is going to be a sub, and the West Essex Knights are coached by Coach Johnson. For the Verona Hillbillies, we're going to have Nene Goblin, Slender Lord, Holy Ghost, which that is not a misspelling, Zendwich, Bongo Frog, and Air Rock, and the Verona Hillbillies are coached by Coached Cali. So let's take it to the live cam. Let's see if the teams are ready for their handshake. So. Here we go. Up first for the West Essex Knights, we have Phil. For the Verona Hillbillies, we have Nene Goblin. For the West Essex Knights, we have Drew Man Group. And for the Verona Hillbillies, we have Slender Lord. For the West Essex Knights, we have 8-Bit Frog. And for the Verona Hillbillies, we have Holy Ghost. Now I can hear them, I can hear them laughing on the live cam, so maybe I did spell ghost wrong. But uh, for the West Essex Knights, we have Anonymous. And for the Verona Hillbillies, we have Zendwich. For their fifth starter, the West Essex bring out the Holy Lemons. And for the Verona Hillbillies, we have Bongo Frog. 
And last but never least, the sixth starter for West Essex Knights will be Bahath. And for the Verona Hillbillies, you have Air Rock. And coaching the West Essex Knights, we will see Coach Johnson. For the Verona Hillbillies, we will see Coach Cali shaking hands for this eSports first. Drink it in, folks. It is a magical experience. So I'm going to throw up the follow us sign. Uh, if you are excited to keep tabs on Garden State Esports and all of the stuff that's going on here in New Jersey when it comes to Scholastic Esports, give us a follow. Uh, I am going to also check in at the same time because I'm the master of multitasking. Uh, making sure that the lobby is ready to go as the players get to their computers. Uh, Coach Johnson is here in the chat with me. Uh, Bongo Frog is playing on my account, MJ. Okay, so Bongo Frog will be uh, MJ in the account. Looks like everybody else is ready to go. Let me check with the coaches while you guys give us a follow on your preferred social media platform. So that way you too can follow all 200 teams who play with Garden State Esports. That's right. We have a third of all New, Jer all New Jersey schools in our league participating in this free-to-play, free-to-join Scholastic Esports League that we've put together. So that way these kids uh, can follow their passion for esports into careers and all that other good stuff. So uh, let me throw it to... Let's see, a real quick be right back while I make sure the lobby is sorted out. All right, we're just moments away from getting started. I am waiting for the ready confirmation from each team's captains. Nene says we're ready. Bahath says we're ready. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time. It's time for the first ever face-to-face -face match between two schools in New Jersey, Garden State Esports history. We throw it to the live cam. I can only imagine they're celebrating, they're excited, they're pumped up. Maybe they're nervous, they're feeling a little sweaty, the pressure's on, not sure. But here we go. As always, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be starting on King's Row. If you are not familiar, oh, and I'm also already going to apologize for my horrible observing skills. Uh, I'm going to do my best, though. So, uh, if you're not familiar with Overwatch, it is a 6v6 first-person shooter. The first objective of the map is to capture a point. That means your team has to push or, uh, yeah, we'll say push the other team off of the point. And if you could stand on it for the uh, set amount of time, you will capture that point. Then next, you will have to push a cart all the way till the end of the map. And so here we go. 
Uh, the blue team is going to be your West Essex Knights. They are bringing out Anna and Mercy as their healers. They are bringing out Reinhardt and Winston as their tanks. And a brave choice, we got Holy Lemons playing Sombra and Drew Man Group playing Hanzo. Unique choices for defense. On offense, we're going to see Anna and Baptiste as your healers, Genji and 76 as your DPS, and we have the very traditional Reinhardt, Zenyatta, Tank Mix. So we'll start off with Genji. As we see them bouncing in and following behind the Reinhardt, their tanks, staying grouped up. Genji breaking off. Reinhardt pins the opposite team's Reinhardt. West Essex Phil in trouble, and that's a big deal. You see Red has taken the point. For the most part, pushed the other team off the point. And they've capped it. So we have Verona taking the first point. You're going to see the cart coming out, and now they must push the cart. Uh, down the corridor, past the defenses here of the West Essex Knights, 2.2. We got the tanks out front, putting some pressure on the West Essex Knights. Ooh, Reinhardt gets, or excuse me, uh, Roadhog gets a big pick there, is able to hook the Genji. Reinhardt drops the hammer, no success, Phil blocks it. We got a Hanzo applying pressure on the top. We got another hook. Ooh, Anna slept the hog. Looks like we have Verona taking control. Wow, you saw a great sleep there on Roadhog, followed up by a pin by the Reinhardt. Anna's doing work. Not only keeping the team healed, but also getting some clutch sleep darts. And with that, looks like Verona's going to take point two. So, uh, leaving Baptiste alone to push the cart while they push forward. Hanzo dropping the wolf from the back line. Doesn't look like he got any kills. Healers healing from the cart. Love to see it. Hopefully we're going to see West Essex regroup. Now, this map is wonderful because it gets harder for the offensive team the closer they get to the defensive spawn. Oh, pinned. Here come all the ults. Get to that payload, West Essex. 76 got the tack visor. Wow. West Essex Anna threw a great grenade there. Hit a lot of the teams, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Getting to that point. Wow, 10 player kill streak for I believe it was Holy Lemons. I think that's going to do it. Hanzo get to the point. That's it. Wow. Big Big streaks there. So now you're going to see the time, uh, excuse me, now you're going to see the side switching. Uh, West Essex is going to go to offense. Verona is going to go and defense, and they're going to repeat the same series of events, but this time on opposite side. So right now we would say that uh, Verona is up 3 nothing in this round. And if... West Essex does not complete all of the goals, capturing the first point, getting the payload to the first and second point in under the amount of time you see on the screen, four minutes and 47 seconds. Um, Verona will win this first map. And we will be playing a best of three today. The loser will get the choice uh, of the next map. We see Verona on offense coming out with nearly an identical uh, comp. 
the only difference is, and of course, now I'm going to show my age. Well, not my age. I'm going to show my life a little bit here. Uh, oh, Echo. That is the name of that new character. But I've never played as Echo or some of these new characters because I have two kids under two at home. So for those of you watching uh, who are scholar student athletes, just know sometimes your gameplay is limited when you decide to start a family. So, uh, but on the other side, you're going to see Zenyatta, uh, Hanzo, Forget. And what I think may be the deciding factor We can see Zarya taking out Echo. We push up to the front with the monkey. Winston harassing the whole side of the uh, West Essex Knights. Ooh, another great sleep on monkey. But down goes monkey. And it can be hard to get past this choke point here, to get past this wall. There are alternate ways to get in there. We'll follow the monkey. Monkey gets a shield, dives in, drops the bubble, gets taken out, but did that give West Essex, the opportunity to push the point. Immortality field dropped by Baptiste. That was big. Monkeys back out. Hanzo remains. Monkey using the ult, slapping some people around. And it looks like, oh, there we go. There it is. Got to wonder, does Verona just want to give up the point? Because it looks like West Essex has done enough to capture it. What you would expect to see is Verona regrouping, right? Exactly right at this next choke point. This is where most of the teams try to hold is this point here. They're going to try to get some chip damage. Hanzo up in the window. Able to take out Echo. Very nicely done. Deciding to stay together. Now the one thing that West Essex might want to consider now is a shield tank. Because one reason you saw it there is you don't have a way to stop Reinhardt's Hammer, ult. Hans is able to pick off the Anna with his wolf ultimate. Bob in there. So if I'm the coach of West Essex, that's something I'm considering is I do not have a shield tank and I have a opposing Reinhardt to consider, uh, that's a tough task, right? To ha not have a shield tank to be able to deal with uh, the other team's composition, right? Monkey's going to have to do a lot of work to be able to keep their team. And you see the Zen keeping the healing orb on Monkey. And then like a good Zenyatta immediately transfers it to the other tank, the Zarya. But Ooh. You're going to have to see Soldier chasing him. Wow, pinned through the door. Very nicely done. Wow. I mean, and that's why Reinhardt is the most consequential character in the game. A good Reinhardt is hard to beat. And not having your own Reinhardt to deal with a Reinhardt is tough. I keep wanting to call that character Cassidy, but I know that's not Cassidy. But somebody in the chat wants to let me know why I'm having a complete brain fart on her name. That would be wonderful.
Zenyatta and the rest of West Essex biding their time, waiting for everybody to get back. Follow Echo. Echo's got an ult now. Oh! That would have been a great time. Great time for Echo to ult, but at least Winston does. Holy Ghost gets eliminated. Monkey doing work, taking out Anna. Pressure and Ryan. Finish him off, monkey. Finish him off, monkey. Well done. Oh, have they? No? Oh, I thought they brought in Winston to take on their Winston. But that was some great gameplay by Winston and a great job by the West Essex support keeping Winston alive, especially when he doesn't have a shield tank to bounce back to. The West Essex takes point two. You see Verona, Hillbillies mount their defense again around this corner, around the choke point. Staying with the monkey, taken out by Holy Ghost. All right, if somebody does not tell me the name of this character, I'm about to Google it, because I'm having a complete brain fart about what her name is. But she drops the bob, whoever she is. And I should know. I have played quite a bit of Overwatch in my day. Monkey looking for time to pounce. Zarya's got the big... Oh, Zarya ults. Hammer ult. Verona's two ults in. Gets three kills out of it. Should four kills. Should be able to at least push back, if not wipe the whole team. There's five. Run away, Hanzo. Run away, Hanzo. There we go. And so you'll start to see, because of that team wipe and nobody being on the payload, West Essex uh, forward progress is actually reversed. And now the Verona Hillbillies can use the payload as a little bit of a shield and get some good positioning, as you can see uh, West Essex grouping up there in the back. Monkey jumps in to cause a little bit of disruption. Zen drops his uh, Tranquility Shield thing. Baptiste has his ult. Only player on the field that currently has an ult ready to go. Looks like Bob might be ready soon. So they have 15 seconds now to get into that golden box. So this is it. Time for West Essex to pull out all the stops. Nine, eight, seven, six, five. Here comes Bob. Four, three, all the ults. Two, one, contested, overtime, wow. Go into the live cam. That was big. That was big. West Essex in the last seconds are able to clutch. Here we go. So. I'm going to do a terrible time explaining the OT rules, but basically that difference in time uh, that West Essex was able to, uh, you know, accumulate, I guess, toward the end while they were contesting before securing the point is the amount of time that they're going to get to be able to take this first point. As I remember that I can double tap and go faster. But here we go, lining up. Ooh, we see Zendwich. There we go, making the pick. Okay. I got a little nervous there. Zen was taking a second to uh, decide what they wanted to play. So you're going to see Verona coming out first. They have 4 minutes and 47 seconds to try to take this first point. If they do take the point 
and as far as they can secure the objectives is as much time that they're going to pass back to uh, West Essex. West Essex making a junk rat change on defense compared to the first time around. You love to see that. Junkrat's great for controlling space, and you want to, uh, yeah, I'm happy to see they got a Reinhardt back too. So Verona pushing, Reinhardt versus Reinhardt action. Ooh. Barrett takes out a healer. Ryan takes out Ryan. Probably going to see Verona being able to cap this point. Four minutes to cap. There it is. Verona takes the win because they were able to secure that point in the time allotted to them from their first push. We take a look at the live cam. Verona celebrating, West Essex regrouping. There's your play of the game. Zendwich with the Zarya. Will they get the votes? Bahath. Bahath catches. There you go. I was going to say, you can't leave your ha teammate hanging. Get the Zendwich those votes. So. Here's what I'm going to do. By popular demand, I'm going to show the Garden State Esports hype video again while I check and see what map West Essex wants to pick for the uh, next choice. As I show off my multitasking skills and get the next map set up, let me encourage you to give us a follow for those of you joining late. Uh, my name is Chris Aviles. I am a middle school STEM teacher in the Monmouth Beach School District here in New Jersey, uh, but I also started Garden State Esports as a way to get Scholastic Esports into here in New Jersey. And what you are witnessing for the first time is to figure out how to change the maps. Um, our first ever face-to-face -face, uh, regular season matchup. The Verona Hillbillies have uh, traveled over to West Essex to play this match in person. A lot of times this is done uh, online, which is completely fine. It's one of the great things about uh, eSports is you don't need a travel budget as a school to get involved. right? You can play from the comfort of your own schools and invite your people in. Uh, and, you know, have a great match, but something really special when we have this type of competition face-to-face. -face. So, uh, let's take a look at that live cam. I may be casting from my studio, and actually, you know, I'll show you that in a second. I may be casting from my classroom, from my eSports arena here in Monmouth Beach. We have eyes on the kids playing over at West Essex. And you can see, well, maybe you can't see. Where's my camera, guys? Hold on. All the things that we have to do. Uh, there, hey, this is me. Good to see you. Check it out. Like I even, in my classroom, I'm not kidding. I'm very fortunate. I have an eSports arena meets a STEM lab. 
Uh, but super excited to cast this game for you today. Hopefully I'm doing okay. Uh, but more excited than anything to have this milestone, um, you know, this milestone type of day here. Verona Hillbillies traveling for the first time ever uh, in Garden State Esports history to West Essex to play this app, to play this match, uh, you know, face-to-face. -face. We love to see it. So we're getting ready to start game two. Verona took game one in overtime, a fantastic match. Uh, we have a substitution. We have Giant Dwarf coming in for the West Essex Knights. The West Essex Knights have also chosen the map Hanamora. I am going to ask the captains of each team, are you ready? Because esports is cool. Right, we just type R in the chat. And once I get the ready from both teams, we will start match number two. I will take the video off of me. Nobody wants to see that. Wow. I'm getting both compliments and hate messages in the chat. You love to see that as well. But that's also one of the values of bringing Scholastic Esports into the classroom, right? Sometimes, maybe, you know, people don't uh, behave appropriately on the internet. Hey, that's part of what we can teach them through Scholastic Esports, is how to be a normal person. With the readies for both teams, looks like we're good to go. So you take a look at Hanamura. Hanamura is an interesting choice because I would argue it is one of the hardest capture pa uh, capture points, capture maps in the game. Uh, you're going to see the offensive team come up this way out of their spawn, and they have to get through this door and capture the point, which is under this roof next to this bell. This is very hard to capture this first point for a lot of different reasons. It's hard to get through that first door. It is hard to, especially depending on what characters you play, defend this bell. So for instance, if uh, one of the teams was to play a hammy, which is a giant hamster in a uh, basically hamster ball, you could swing around that bell and make it super difficult. Or if the defensive team drops a Torbjorn who has an automatic targeting turret, it's really hard to push past this point. So we see West Essex on defense, Verona on offense. Let's see how they do. Verona coming out. Let's see how well they do pushing past the point here. So we saw Verona went for a rush, divided their team up, in trouble or in danger of getting chased down. Ooh. Lucio backing out, trying to regroup. Now here comes Verona, but notice they're pushing in only three at a time. Uh, we do have Holy Lemons and I believe Giant Dwarf going to be running back. 76 gets hacked. But it looks like Verona is going to capture the point. Wasn't sure how splitting up their composition was going to go, but overall it looked like it went pretty well for them. Now we're going to see Verona have to push to point number two. They could choose to go up this staircase. Whoa. Which leads them over this way. And looks like they are going to go top. Ooh. There's a lot that just happened there. Hanzo got taken out while using his ult, which means he loses his ult. You saw somebody get sleep darted. While Ryan also used his ultimate, but it looks like it's going to be enough for West Essex to hold the point, at least for now. You still got Diva, Baptiste, and Lucio up top. Over here on the side, you have uh, Junkrat coming in. 
I'll tell you what I love about this Junkrat. He's launching in uh, basically his grenades while he's running in, trying to get any chip damage he can. You have Verona regrouping up top. Ryan's back. Ryan, like I said, is kind of the key. Ryan falls. Ryan with the strategic drop and hammer pushes him back into the room. Wow, Ryan gets the nano boost, giving him extra strength and health and uh, damage blocking. But it looks like it's not going to be enough. Verona's close to capturing. Verona's chasing him down, pushing him off the point. It's four to three. West Essex got on the point. Big hammer by Ryan. Phil, oh, Phil Ryan taken out. Here comes the tire. Doesn't get anybody. Who is this hero, Lucio? Hero Lucio holding the point longer than most. <laughs> Gives time for Phil and the rest of West Essex to get back. Lucio clutching it. Wow. That was big. Verona gets pushed back. Able to capture quarter of that point. West Essex heads up top, believing that that's where Verona is going to uh, attack from next. But big, big, big shout out to Giant Dwarf there. His Lucio stalling, uh, making sure that he was able to uh, prevent Verona from capturing the point by staying on it was huge. Here comes Verona, going to bully their way up the stairs. Ooh, I knew it was going to happen. Hanzo. Oh, Diva Bomb, get that shield up. Nice job, Ryan. Everybody's safe. Takes out the Diva, but you got somebody on point trying to cap. That's Lucio. Uh, but I kind of saw it coming. Drew Man with the fantastic Wolf Arrow. Because they were all packed in that tight little corridor, uh, easy for that arrow to take out half of the Verona team. So they have to hold this point, West Essex does, for another two minutes or so. Uh, and then they'll get their turn. Oh, we got shoulder. Uh, shoulder. We got soldier using the arrow. Here comes a tire. Wow, same way that Hanzo was able to use the arrow because they were all grouped up. Looks like Junkrat was able to use their tire, push everybody around. Let's see, that's it. Not able to get back in time. So with a minute 55 seconds left on the clock, Verona is able to cap point two. So to win, West Deptford has to cap both points, and that second point has to be faster than a minute and 55. A lot of good stuff. Taking a quick look over at the live cam. Got to be happy with that performance. And if you're interested, uh, I believe closer to the camera is Verona. And opposite side of the camera, that's the West Essex side. We got tiny fist pumps in the chat saying the Ryan Drew man beats Ryan the Ryan any day of the week. Caps in the chat. For those of you who are not cool like I am, cap means lying. And then when the kids say no cap, that means not lying. Just so just to be that translator for the parents watching, right? I know it's hard to keep up with kids these days and their crazy slang, but that's a little cap, no cap uh, lesson for you today, right? Here in Garden State Esports, we aim to educate everybody, socially, emotionally, academically, even parents. So there's your cap, no cap lesson for the day. We got Ryan Hart Phil leading his team in. Catches a bubble. Good bubble by Zarya. Waiting for that shield to drop. Phil Ryan recharges. Taking some damage.
But I can tell you, being a habitual gold level Overwatch player, this choke point here in the first point where West Essex is trying to push through is one of the hardest uh, one of the hardest choke points to push through, in my opinion, in the game. So we'll see if West Essex can do it. Oh, Tyre going through the back door. Now let's see. I actually have replay ability. Let me see if the replay works. Check this out. Here we go. While they regroup, we're going to go to gameplay. The hardest, and we should uh, see here in the corner. One of the hardest choke points to push through, corner. in my opinion, in the game. So we'll see if West Watch my buddy. Here it comes. It. Boom. Oh, see tire, that tire going through go the up back and around the wall door. for those three kills? That was junk rat. Now let's say trying to and push yeah, through folks. one of the hardest. Uh, I do have replay. Taking a look at the Verona side. Now, let me check. I know MJ is using the coach's account, so MJ is actually Bongo Frog. So, Bongo Frog, with a huge hammer, Bongo Frog, gets most of the team, takes out the Baptiste, allows the rest of his team, looking like they're going to clean up West Essex. Somber runs away. Anna with the sleep dart, but follows up. And there it is. Team kill. Initiated by Bongo Frog, the Reinhardt of the Verona Hillbillies. Nicely done. Nicely done. Uh, let me fly back over here. Ooh, West Essex sleeps the Rhine, but unable to f capitalize on it. All right, and that's one of those things that separate good teams from great teams. Anna being able to hit darts that's called by our team are big. Got West Essex on point. Oh, huge, huge hammer. Huge hammer by Phil. That may do it. Let's see. Let's see. Got to push them out. Got to push them out. They push out the uh, junk rat. They push out the 76, and I think they're going to cap it. Or as the kids would say, no cap. Looks like West Essex is going to cap it. There it is. So if you're taking a look at the screen, you see the clock ticking down. Three minutes and 42 seconds. That is how long West Essex has to cap point number two. They must cap it in uh, less time or equal time to force an overtime that uh, Verona did. Wow, as soon as he gets his arrow, Hanzo tosses it and is able to take out a healer, which is fantastic. Wes Essex uh, hits D.Va, bringing out the baby D.Va. Big hammer by Bongo Frog. Let's see if he can get back in position, though. Bongo Frog in bad shape there, needs to get out, or excuse me, get back. 76 able to do work with attack visor. There's the team kill. So Verona pushes him out. Two minutes and 55 seconds left for West Essex to cap point number two. If they cannot do it, Verona will win today's match 2-0, scoring the first ever victory in face-to-face -face varsity esports. Now I do see some teams sticking up top. We got Baptiste uh, with an ult up top ready to go. We got a Diva Bomb as well. Ooh, Baptiste is able to take out, uh, oh, uh-oh, things are happening, things are happening. Oh, Mortality Field, Tire comes in, takes out 8-Bit Frog, 76 takes out Phil. Where's the pressure? Diva chasing down Hanzo, Bongo Frog takes out the Hanzo. And then Wisely... You see West Essex fall back. Mr. Commentator face cam, please. Look, hey, it's not about me, all right? It's about the kids. It's about the scholastic battle you see before. If you want to see a lot of face cam, join us on Mondays. I host a statewide Fortnite tournament. You get a lot of face cam, right? That's how we pay the bills here for Garden State Esports. Right? Face cam Mondays, so make sure you come back and join us. If you want to play a little Fortnite, 
Night Night Diva. Diva gets hacked. West Essex taking a new path. Looks like they're going to go over this little bridge looking thing over here. At some point, they're going to have to drop down and make a move. Oh, put that shield up. All right. Ooh. Looks like Verona pressuring, diving across the barrier is going to make a difference. Got Holy Lemons trying to find uh, a place to do a little sneaky peek. We got a big bongo frog hello emote. Verona wants to hit me with their best emotes real quick. Ahead. Your time to shine. Oh, Hanzo dropping the arrow. Not getting any kills. Ryan diving in. Rest of his team should go with him. Rest of his team should go with him. Ooh, tire. Oh, I feel like Somber is waiting all game to hit that uh, hitter alt. But it's not enough. But that'll do it. Go into the live cam. Ladies and gentlemen, your winners of the first ever face-to-face -face matchup between Verona and West Essex. Verona takes the dub 2-0. There it is. Congratulations to the Verona Hillbillies for the big win. So what I would like to do is see if I can arrange for an interview. So let me send you guys to the Be Right Back screen. And let's see if we can get somebody from Verona to come do an interview. Now, a little behind the scenes in my head, I'm thinking... How can I interview them when the camera has a delay and I hear the camera in my headset, which totally throws me off. But I'm going to figure it out on the fly. Uh, let's see. Send me a Verona player who wants to do an interview. Send. Stick them in front of the camera. All right, looks like we got team captain Nene from Verona going to do an interview. Now, here, here's what I'm going to do is let me see if I can do it this way. I'm actually going to, do you want me to call on Discord? Do I want you to call on Discord? I think I want you to call on Discord. So let's do that. And while you were calling on Discord, I have to figure out a way to mute the live camera or my headset. So what can I do? So that's the, that should be the audio coming from the stream. 
So we have yeah. Nene coming. You should hear audio coming from the stream in your headset now. Check one, check one. Nene, can you hear me? Nene, can you hear me? Yes, I can. All right, so we got Nene. Can you hear me? I hear you. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how it sounds in stream. So let's see. Nene, go ahead and say hello for me. All right. Uh, let's see. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to call through Discord and let's see, Nene, can you hear me? I need to do this. How about now, Nene, can you hear me? What's the best way to do this? Why don't I have desktop audio? Hello? Oh, hey, there we go. Hey. Okay. Nene, how are you? Good. Good. All right. Hang out one second for me, Nene. I'm going to All make right. sure this doesn't sound like hot garbage on the stream. So right. if somebody in chat or somebody over at West Essex can tell me, do things sound okay coming through the stream? Um, sure. Does does everything sound good coming through the stream? Yeah, I have audio coming through. We've got an ad from the stream coming through. Okay, yeah. Everything everything sounds good. There's just an ad running through. Hey, you got to pay the bills, right, Nene? Yep. yep. Nene, I need you to come in camera, though. You are not in camera. Oh, sorry. Should I stand uh, up or should I just keep sitting? I would stand up. All right. Beautiful. All right. Nene from Verona. Mm -hmm. One second, please. Your coach sent me a little uh, little thing for Survey you. Survey thing? Yep. Uh, if you're looking for my name, my name's uh, Luca. Luco. Oh, sorry, Luca Tedesco. Is that how I say it? Yes. Fantastic. Yep. Luca. Awesome. Are we through our commercial? Uh, uh, not yet. Almost. I wonder if everyone sees the commercial at the same time. That I don't know. Oh, and we're up. Wonderful. All right, here we go. Friends, we are joined by Verona Captain Nene Goblin, also known as Luca Tedesco. Luca, I mean, let's start with this. How'd you feel after today's win? I felt really excited. Like, this is the first time, honestly, this is the first time our team has been able to play in person. And just to look after the match, just to stand up and see the excitement, not only for our team, but just everyone in the room. It was really, like, it was really something. And what did you think about how you guys played today? What was what was the uh, the deciding factor? What gave Verona the edge? Do you think? Um, well, I, I think, think we played, played really well. I don't know what gave us that edge. I think it was just our our we, we communicated, communicated very well. I will say. So there's that, but I don't really know. It's just we played really well, and we communicated great. So and tell yeah. me about tell me about that, Luca. Is this is a game where you have to have six people all working together, mm -hmm. right? How does Verona practice uh, their communication skills for a game like this? Um, well, it helps one thing outside the game. We're all pretty close friends. So, so, and we, we all do a lot of stuff together. I know um, there's two people on the band I do with. Uh, I'm in the theater program with someone else. Um, but outside of all that stuff, we, we practice, practice together on our weekends, and we don't have anything out of school. We play from home. We're, we're trying to, we're working on getting computers at our school, but we go home after school or on the weekends after whatever we're doing, hop on, play a few games, and then we work on those skills that way. I love it. And, and you touched on something um, that I think is really important. And again, you know, Garden of State Esports, uh, 
on one hand is about games and competition and giving kids like you, Luca, the opportunity to play games with your friends and have a good time. But the other side of this too is is developing those skills like communication, like teamwork, like leadership. And also part of this too is um, when I talk to school districts about why they should have an esports team, part of this is it's an investment in STEM. And so yeah. let me ask you, because uh, you know this is something I hope that the administration at Verona sees. What would it mean to your program to have the devices that you need to be able to practice in person instead of remotely? Uh, to practice in person would mean a lot for our communication skills. We could, like if we're just gonna list off some things, being in the same room together today, being in the same room together felt so much more different and so much better than being at home. So wait, this when is we, we, Luca, wait, is this actually the first time you as a team have ever played in the room at all? Yes, correct. Oh, so this is even, you guys aren't getting together to play in person virtually against another team. This is literally the first time all year that you guys got together to play. Mm -hmm. Correct. Wow. Oh, so this must be extra special for you. Uh -huh. Yeah, it really is. That's awesome. Uh, and, and, you know, I can tell you as the founder of Garden State Esports, I started this during uh, covid so my own students, you know, were able to stay connected while we were all locked down. And the idea, oh. you know, and the idea that you guys were able to come together today and for the first time, you know, really two, almost two and a half years after I started this, and you guys were able to play together and travel and be part of the first ever face-to-face -face varsity match. Um, I mean, that really makes me proud. And, and so yeah. thank, thank you and, and your school for, for wanting to participate in this. Yeah. Um, but I also heard that you're in theater. I also heard that you're in mm -hmm. band. Um, where do you see yourself in a couple years? Um, I, I'm, I'm going, going to college, college uh, for uh, computer, for hardware engineering. Ooh. That's what, what I plan on going to. Can I, can I hit you with a fun fact? Sure. Did you know 72% of kids who play for their high school esports team go on to major in STEM? Oh, really? Right, and so that's one of those things too that by having an esports program, you are encouraging uh, kids like yourself, right, to want to pursue uh, different STEM paths and STEM careers. So I think that's really cool. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, Luca, I can't thank you enough. Um, really, the last question I always ask, and and really, what I think the most important thing that the folks watching this hear from you. What has it meant to be part of your esports team this year? Because I believe this is the last match of the season, correct? Uh, I think we have one next week. Oh, that's right. You guys are North Jersey, so you do have one more next week. Um, the rest of the league is done. The rest of the league will be watching. But tell me, Luca, what has it meant to be part of uh, an esports team at your school? Um, what it means to be a part of our esports team is, is connections and, and friendship. I mean, I, that sounds really cliche, I know. Um, it's not cliche, but it's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah but, but like, we, we have some people who, we have, we have variety of skill levels, some from, I've been playing for like five years straight to I bought the game a, a cut like a year or two ago. And it's, it's, it's completely, completely open to anyone who wants to join. And I think it's a great thing that we have to get closer to just everyone in general. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. Um, mm -hmm. And so I'm really happy to be able to cast this game today. I'm really happy that you guys got to play not only in person as a team, but you guys got to make history, right, that you were able to play in the first ever face-to-face -face, uh, varsity eSports match in Jersey history. So congratulations yeah. on the win. Congratulations on making history. Uh, looking you. forward to following you and the team for the coming years. And, uh, yeah, awesome, fantastic. All right, thank you. No worries. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, and I think, uh, Luca, if you could, let me get a West Essex kid. If you can let the West Essex coach uh, send me a kid, that'd be fantastic. All right, cool. Thank you. We're looking for West Essex. All right, Brian. Okay, yeah. Hey. All right. So okay. I heard we have Brian. Yeah, that's me. Fantastic. Brian, who were you in game? Uh, I was the Zenyatta and the Anna. There we go. So we have our support Zenyatta and Anna. Brian joining us. Brian, 
Uh, how you know? What do you think about today's game? How'd it go? Uh, I think uh, I think we we're a bit unlucky. We we're a bit slow to start on uh, on King's Row. There kind of got steamrolled at the start. We we made a good comeback. It just wasn't quite enough, you know. Okay. And so, if you had to go back and do it over again, what would we change? Were you happy with uh, the compositions? I think... Were we happy with uh, your picks as a you know a team? What do we think? I think at the start we. Our picks were a bit off. Uh, I think that we went a bit too, uh, like, dive-heavy uh, and didn't have enough, like, substance to kind of stop them, which is why they kind of went straight through us, mm -hmm. uh, which we kind of fixed in later uh, rounds. I like it. I like it. And, uh, I mean, really, you know, the the mushy uh, teacher stuff is the stuff that I'm always interested in. You know, so, Brian, what did it mean? Now, unlike Verona, you guys have been able to play all year. Uh, you guys have a wonderful space. What has it meant for you to be able to be in the same room with your team and to, uh, you know, really kind of be able to practice and, and grow as a team together? What has that been like? Honestly, it's been it's been so fun, you know, just like playing a game that I really like with people that I really like. You know, it's just this is a really good way to kind of like bond and all that, you know. And so outside of esports, what do your interests include? Uh, well, I'm, I'm the, the band, uh, as well as marching band and jazz band. Uh, yeah, I think that's, that's pretty much it. But uh, oh, Wonderful. Yeah. And so, if I asked you to tell me about your team, what would you say about them? Uh, oof. I mean, they're standing right in front of me, so I need to say only good things. But uh... we'll, we'll stick with the only good thing. <laughs> but, I mean, you guys uh, have think... played together for, what, eight, nine, ten weeks now? Uh, yeah. Do... Do the players on the West Essex teams also play in other seasons together? Like, were you in the Rocket League fall season? Uh, some of us were in the Rocket League uh, season. I wasn't. But uh, most of us are going to be staying in the spring for Valorant. Wow, Valorant's uh, going to be huge. Do you know that it's going to be on yeah. Sports Illustrated? Oh, oh, yeah, I heard about that. Oh, it's going to be wild. Valorant is going to be a fantastic season. So I'm excited that you get to be a part of it. But tell me, tell me about your team. I mean, if you had to kind of sum up... You know, your thoughts and feelings about what it's meant to be part of the West Essex Knights this season. Uh, what does yeah. it mean? I think that, like I said, it's like, you know, playing the game is fun, winning is fun, but it's all about, like, being together, you know? Just kind of like after COVID and everything, having to stay so apart, just kind of having this, this thing that we all go together and, like, this game all about communication and working together and knowing each other, just kind of like, I don't know, it helps a lot with, like, it's, you know, we're just hanging out and having fun. And that's what it's all about. And I'm trying to think. I know West Essex has been uh, with Garden State Esports longer than Verona. Uh, during COVID, were you guys still actively playing or were you unable to? Uh, during COVID, we, we did go into play, yeah. We uh, we went, like, here in person even when school was virtual. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, and what did that mean to you to be able to connect during a time where you know, some schools weren't so lucky and then a lot of the things in, you know, lives of students like yours were canceled. I mean, uh, was that something that meant a lot to you to be able to get in there and see people? And Yeah, I think it was, I think it was really important to just kind of have that like face-to-face, -face, like human interaction, you know, mm -hmm. rather than just like playing online. It just, it just wouldn't be the same if we weren't all in a room together, you know? I hear you. And uh, really the, uh, the, the last question I have for you is, you know, what has it meant to you to be part of an esports team this season? I honestly, it's been all about it. Like, what it's meant to me is just kind of like having fun, like playing a game that we all love together, and you know, just kind of like I don't know, being a team. Yeah, I love it. And uh, what uh, what year are you in? I'm a senior. So, what are the plans? Uh, the plans, I'm going into computer science. Uh, oh I don't have God. a school in mind yet. Another STEM major. This is amazing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, no school in mind yet. What do you hope to do with your computer science degree? Uh, I actually want to either get into, like, supply chain stuff, uh, or make video games. There you go. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, Brian, I thank you. I thank West Essex for being part of this. Yeah, of course. Um, of course. Thank, Thank you. you. And if you can grab your coach for me, uh, that would be fantastic. Great. Yeah. Thank you.
Coach Johnson. Hello, how's it going? Fantastic, how are you? All right, doing well, doing well. So, uh, tough loss today. I mean, what words of encouragement do you have for the team? Right, you got one game left in the season. What are you going to talk about? Well, I think um, I think we had a lot of nerves. Uh, this is a this is a big new event for everybody. Um, so it was tough to get settled down a little bit with the with the pomp and circumstance. So I think the biggest thing is just trusting ourselves uh, and our abilities and and uh, communicating a little bit more smoothly. Uh, we got a little crossed up on the first half of Kings Row there. So I think um, I think that's the, that's the main thing going forward, and that's the biggest thing we've worked on all season is um, taking taking skills they developed on their own, bringing it into a team environment, and learning to put that together. I love it. And so uh, you make those adjustments. Maybe if we play face-to-face uh, -face again, shake out some of those jitters. Uh, what's next for the West Essex Knights? Uh, well, we're, uh, we're looking forward to the spring season uh, with Garden State Esports. We've got a pretty strong Valent roster to put together, so we'll be starting that up. Uh, right away. I know preseason starts soon, so we're looking to f looking forward to hitting the ground running there and, and uh, hopefully making the playoffs. Fantastic. And I was just telling Brian, Valorant's going to be big. We're teaming up with Sports Illustrated, Conference One. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, there should be quite a bit of hype around uh, this league, so it's going to be really cool. Very excited. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's great for the kids. Every time I every time I mention that, um, they're super excited. Uh, getting going to be able to get a, a player profile on Sports Illustrated, and uh, you yeah. know, being as close to professional as you can in, in the education space uh, really shows them the future that's possible in esports and and the uh, the development around the whole scene. Yeah, and and even like we heard so far from the uh, students that we talked to. They wanted a major in STEM, and so people have to understand you can't be serious about esports and not be uh, excuse me, you can't be serious about STEM and not be serious about esports. You know, this is yep. a uh, this is a, a booming industry, one of the fastest growing, if not the fastest growing, and a lot of these STEM jobs are going to be you know either directly in or tangentially related to right this field. Um, yeah, and you and you definitely throw the uh, throw the A in that acronym too, um, with with shoutcasting and um, you know interviewing and journalism all, all surrounding the entire scene you know the the arts and the humanities lumps into the whole thing so i think esports is is real important for where we're where we're going in terms of competition itself yeah absolutely uh and really the last question is you didn't have to put on this event right you, yeah you went above and beyond and reached out to verona invited them over let's do it face to face you know, uh, I believe you guys are rivals, pretty close to each other. Why was it important for you to take that step and play this in person, even though you didn't have to? Well, the uh, the, the biggest thing that we've wanted to put together as we built the esports program here at West Essex is, um, is align it as close to athletic sports as possible. And the local rivalries and the sports conferences and meeting your opponent face-to-face -face is a huge part of the competition experience. Um, and a huge part of the learning experience about how to how to meet someone across a, a field of battle and and still treat them as an equal, treat them with respect and, and compete uh, with good sportsmanship. Um, so, you know, we Verona's right down the road. It takes them 10 minutes to get here by bus. Um, it was sort of a no brainer to invite them over. We, we built the space with this in mind. Uh, we hope as more Western Essex County schools uh, build their esports teams and join the league that uh, we can do more events like this and when they uh when they build their esports rooms in their schools uh we can go visit them in, in their house and uh and and put a win together on an away match yeah. so um that's uh that's, that's the whole goal, goal is, is is align as, as close to athletic sports as possible and get all of those experiences into the esports scene love it love it yeah and, and again right right in line with the garden state esports mission is we want these kids to know that there's real people behind that screen um, and the way that we treat each other matters. So uh, I can't tell you, uh, you know, just how awesome it was to see this. I'm, you know, I'm sitting here at five o'clock on a Friday. My wife is going to yell at me because, you know, I'm a, <laughs> half, I'm a half hour late. But, you know, when I started this two and a half years ago, like this is what I had envisioned. Like this is what I wanted this to be. So thank you. Absolutely. For, thank you for helping me make this happen and running a great program. Um, I don't know if uh, she is still there, but if Holy Lemons would like to catch an interview, we'd love to talk to her. Absolutely, I'll uh, I'll bring her over. Fantastic.
All right. Holy lemons, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing well. Uh, congratulations on making history today, playing uh, as part of the first ever face-to-face -face varsity esports match in Jersey history. It was a fantastic match. Um, yeah. Pushing it to overtime on map one, getting pretty close there on map two. Um, mm -hmm. What are your thoughts about how uh, you guys played? Um, well, I definitely think that we were a bit nervous at first. I mean, obviously, with this whole new environment with being in person, it's pretty crazy because, I mean, us as a team and me being the first time being on the Overwatch team, actually, um, I had never really experienced being, like, in person, I guess, with my team and having the team right there. So definitely we were a bit nervous and, you know, we didn't really focus. But I think that as we, you know, gradually moved forward, we definitely, like, locked in as a team. Right. And we were able to move forward. I mean, even though we didn't win in the end, I still think that we definitely started to, you know, synchronize a bit and, and like, like, understand where we were, what we needed to do, and, you know, work as a team. So Yeah, and I think it's one of those things, like you said, is if, if this becomes a regular part of, you know, what West Essex does, goes and travels or invites people over, I think those nerves, too, are something you're going to get used to, so... I, I agree Definitely. with you. And, uh, you know, if nothing else, at least as a, as a caster, I mean, not that I'm any good, but you always want something entertaining. Um, and you guys played really well, pushed it, you know, to overtime, like I said, and close on map two. So uh, we're just happy and excited and proud to be able to cast this special event and you guys to be involved yeah. in it. Um, you know, some of the things that I'm asking some of the other players, uh, I'm not sure what year you're in, uh, but what are your future plans look like? So I am a senior in high school. Um, currently, I've been applying to different music schools, so I'm going to be a musician. Specifically, I'm also looking into an MPT degree where I may be making video game soundtracks in the future. So I'm thinking about being in one of these, you know, game companies and producing, you know, soundtracks that people are going to hear for years to come. So oh, I yeah. love that, you know, and, and I love that you're taking something that you love music and something that you love video games and kind of combining it into one. Uh, you know, I, I, I probably sound like a repeat, you know, I don't know if you heard it, but I just keep saying, like, when I was building Garden State Esports, this is what I had in mind, is is mm -hmm. let me give these kids an opportunity to not only do what they enjoy, but, um, I mean, on your team, do you have any additional roles? Have you done any casting or anything like that? Um, Not necessarily, as I kind of came in here as... um. You know, one of the players here actually invited me to come here since um, before when I first started with the esports team, I was actually only a Valorant player okay. for maybe two years. So um, he brought me in, um, the Hoth took me yes. in, uh, and basically I've been with this team since. And um, yeah, I mean, I've been just kind of like rolling around with the roles, you know, figuring it all out. Because I mean, I've been playing Overwatch since it actually came out. Uh -huh. So seeing it in a you know, competitive sense has been really interesting. So, Fantastic. Yeah. And uh, will you be uh, joining West Essex again for the Valorant season? Yes, I will be. Oh, uh, good. I've been hyping it up. I'm very excited. It's going to be on <laughs> yeah, Sports, it's gonna be great. Sports Illustrated and everything. Yes, that's going to be awesome. Yes. So um, I'm very excited yeah, for that. I mean, la last question I have for you is the same I asked everybody else is, what has it meant to you to be part of an esports team this season? So, I mean, again, as I've really never had the experience to truly be a part of a team and now to feel so synchronized and so, you know, together with my teammates, it really, again, is like playing a team that I love so much and, you know, being able to be with other people who appreciate it and appreciate, you know, the whole like teamwork aspect of it and coming together to be able to appreciate and love and play the game that we all love and appreciate and to just have fun with it. So it's been really great. So. And let me ask you one more thing, maybe a tough mm -hmm. question. Okay. Um, you know, Garnet State Esports, as we continue to grow, we are in 165 school districts, about a third of the state, but there's still some administrators and some parents out there who don't see the value of Scholastic Esports. If you had to tell them why every school should have the opportunity to have the experiences that you had this season on West Essex, why would you tell them it's important that every school, you know, be able to have this opportunity? I mean... You know, as an esports team, we have so many more things than just playing video games. Some parents, I mean, obviously, may just see it as like, oh, you're just playing a video game. It's black and white. But when you look into it further, as we're a team, we're working together, we're understanding, strategizing things and problem solving and 
so many more things cognitively that are going on in our brains and that are, you know, helping us like be like educated in this sense where we're able to work with each other. We're able to learn, we're able to grow. So it's so much more than just playing something on a video game or just looking at a screen for multiple hours in a day. It's working with other people and like, you know, being with people that you like and being able to understand, you know, these concepts of teamwork and like appreciation for like the games that we play and um, all of that. So I think that every kid should be able to get the chance to be able to, you know, play in an esports league if they want to, because it's very important to have those kinds of skills and to be able to, you know, showcase that in something that so many kids are so passionate about these days. So I love it. What a wonderful answer. And thank you so much uh, for taking the time to do the interview. Thank you so much for, yeah. you know, being part of your team over there. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure uh, we're going to be hearing from you during the Valorant season. Yes, Fantastic. definitely. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Miss Holy Lemons. Thank you to everybody you so watching at home. Uh, and uh, we will see you next time on Garden State Esports.